Hello, Tim here and welcome to my snow painting demo. This is mainly for my patrons up on my Patreon site, uh, www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. And basically up there every month we have a painting project to do and uh, my members, my patrons submit um, their, their paintings to me. Um, as a photograph and I, I give a critique of it. This month we did, we're doing something different. We had, we had a theme of a snow painting. We want to do a snow painting, try and circulate the topics, try and do something different every month, uh, some different scene or using some sort of different technique or whatever. And um, I very rarely have done snow paintings. Uh, well, I'm based in the UK and where I am very rarely see the snow so there's not much opportunity to uh, get out there and, and see snow. Um, so I asked everyone to submit photographs and of snow of snow scenes and shortlisted that and uh, the one I'm going to do is Charlene's photo. Now uh, the the source photo is only available to my patrons um, up on my Patreon site. Uh, more details in the comments. So this is the demo. Let's get cracking. Okay. So the scene is a country lane, um, probably, I guess, North America. And uh, we have some distant mountains. Uh, we've got some trees as well on the left hand side. Let me just check one thing here. Trees on the left hand side. We've got a, a lane leading us into the scene, a, a scrubby sort of hillside over on the right hand side and some nice shadows. The sun, the sun's coming from the left and casting some nice shadows across the lane. So um, as always, the first step is the drawing and I'm using a soft pencil here to uh, to get in the uh, the main shapes of the mountains and the edges of objects um, so I'm going to start with the background hills we've got a sort of background hill coming in and then the base of that mountain is a bit like that there are some far very far mountains in the distance And then there's the a scrubby sort of hill going up to going up to the right. Uh, I haven't drawn the lines too precisely. Um, they're just some very well, quite faint lines of those, particularly in the in the distance. I don't want too too hard a, a pencil marks there. So the lane sort of. I'm not sure where the lane goes round to the left, but there's a. There's the right hand side of the lane there and we have a bit of light in the middle which is quite nice and then left hand side of the lane is like that. The In the middle of the lane there are some ridges of snow and um, some tire marks but let's just try and think of that as like a little, almost like a little wall in a way. Like that. Um, trees. There's these trees. I think they're birch trees on the left, very typical of that landscape. So a small one. up there and then a bigger one in the middle perhaps it does a little bit of a fork like that and maybe another one going out like that so there's lots of 
little twigs and branches and things gone. I'm not going to draw those in. Um, I, I might draw in some of the major um, branches, but not not too precise like that. OK, there are some dogs on the loose. Um, so dog number one and little tail and then dog number two let's have a, another dog um, maybe here just basic shapes really and a little tail going up like that and then maybe we'll have an a figure in the scene as well um, to balance up this so we got the the trees on the left dogs in the middle I think it needs something around about here so let's have a, a figure Something like that. Maybe it's got a a bobble hat, a hood, big jacket. And legs. And I'll actually draw the feet, maybe the legs that have sunk into the snow a little bit. Um, the shadows will be going slightly angular so they're going to be more horizontal here and then as we come down to the bottom left hand corner they're going to angle around a little bit more so they'll be sort of a bit like this uh, so that figure is going to be quite dark as well dark against the got dark against the light background uh, there's some scrubby there's some shrubs and twigs and things coming out of the ground over here. I'm not going to draw them in. I'm going to put those in, paint those in with a brush, um, not actually draw the outline of those. Right. Uh, over on the left hand side, there's just sort of pot marks in the snow here and there. Um, a little bit of light coming through on the left hand side of the tree. So this area I've got to keep light and then gradually a little bit darker as we come down the scene. Right, so next I'm going to damp the paper, I think. Yes, I'm going to dampen the paper with a sponge and clear clearish water. Um, just go over the scene. So I can get some soft edges going. Evenly over the paper. Make sure there's no dry spots. Just fray lightly with this soft sponge over the entire scene. Now, with a big mop brush, I'm going to put in a few little accents of colour into this wet um, surface here, just here and there. So I picked up a bit of yellow there just to
just to give it an extra dimension to the snow so it's not too not too uh, not too boring um, just a little bit of yellow there and maybe she just a little bit of light red as well here and there and a little bit of green as well now sky I want to actually let's just mop up a little bit of that there and keep that light on the left hand side now the sky I will keep fairly simple let's go with a, a cobalt and cerulean blue cobalt turquoise and cerulean blue sky goes on quite easy when I've just pre-wetted the paper and we get a little bit lighter as we come down towards the uh, the ridge of the mountains now I need this to dry a little bit let's just check oh, it's actually drying quite well Could have uh, had a clean paper towel just to mop that up. So just let that go, it's granulating a little bit, doesn't matter. Right, let's go in now, do the background mountains. I shall we'll start with the, the furthest mountain first. So smaller brush with a better point to it pick up a little bit of cerulean blue sorry cobalt blue and Get that into the distance. It's going to bleed a little bit into the sky, it doesn't matter. Like that. Now the background hills here on the left hand side. Let's go a bit darker. So cerulean blue. Sorry, I keep saying cerulean blue cobalt blue and a bit of burnt sienna gray it up a bit so going gradually darker in value um, let's just mop up a little bit of that where it's bleeding into the sky going just a little bit too much so burnt sienna cobalt blue and come down now this uh, silver birch I might paint around that Doesn't matter if I leave out little bits. And I 
might go a little bit more go a little bit more of a golden color towards the bottom because there's some far trees there that have got some winter color on them but let's just continue down a bit further Just trying to get the right consistency. And then maybe just a little bit of this light red at the bottom. Actually, it needs to be quite dark. Let's go in with a little bit of cobalt and light red. And the brush is almost quite dry now. Bit of orange. Although it's not, strictly speaking, pure orange. Being contaminated a little bit with the Cut on the brush already. Ultra in blue. And over to meet the hillside on the right. Okay, now the scrubby things on the right hand side. So this right hand hill here has got some little tiny bushes, there's no leaves on them, there's little twigs coming out of the out of the ground of the snow. So let's choose um, let's choose a little brush for this, a little a little small round brush, synthetic. Um, again, not too much, not too much water. Um, a little bit of yellow in it. Altering blue, burnt sienna. And now trying to get in the texture and the form of these bushes I'm just really fire mountains have got a bit of darkness to them where there's some maybe some forests and it's a very similar value to the uh, these little scrubs and scrubby bushes I'm doing now So the bushes in the distance, they'll be quite dense and close together. Then as we come 
nearer to us they're going to get bigger in shape and more spaces between them this is rather laborious doing this so you've got to think of the the angle of the hillside and these bushes emanating out from the the hillside as I say getting we can be a bit more erratic with our brush strokes as we come down towards us and going, going up to the edge They're almost dry brush strokes here. Now I'll add in some shadows behind them, which will be a little bit of cobalt blue. So I'm thinking about the ang angle of the, <coughs> excuse me, the angle of the sun coming in and these shadows going up the hill a little bit. Just catching a few of them. Not too much, or that's going to look a bit too kind of messy over there. And maybe there's some shadows going across the road. I think it's a road. Now at the base of the this right hand mountain here, this right hand hillside, we can see at the edge of the road a little line of snow or whatever. Some maybe a little bit of a, a trench or something that just to just to define the edge of that there. There, try and keep it nice and faint. Um, I think that Far Mountain is very quite a nice feature in the painting. Just try and isn't exactly right, but give it a bit of a peek as well. Right now, next. I think we're ready to do these 
trees as long as this is dry that those background hills are dry uh, so the plan here is to come down with the trees and then kind of blend them in with the shadows going across the scene and these shadows th these are these shadows are going to be very very important because they've got to be not too straight and they're following the 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 undulated um, surface of the snow and then they go down into um, they hit this little trench in the road where there's a wheel that's gone down here wheels have gone down here wheels have gone down here so this is a slight ridge in the middle so it goes across a shadow will go across it'll come down go across the road then up the this little um, ridge in the middle across the top of the ridge then disappear down the other side and continue along and then up sort of like that rather like um, shadow going across the street and it hits the pavement and it goes across and it goes goes up and, and so on right so for the tree for the tree now this silver birch let's go in with um, I've got a bit of I've got a bit of white gouache paint down here that's been messed up dirted up with some other paint so I'm gonna just go in with this first see if uh, it's gonna be lighter than the lighter than the background mountains something like that so mainly the trunk is light doesn't matter if it just bleeds in a little bit but uh, leave some little leave some little little bits of uh, paper showing there where the sun could be hitting that now for the branches and twigs um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a sword brush here dagger brush or I could use a rigger and this takes a little bit of practice but let's make sure let's make sure this brush is well and truly damp first of all actually let's just mix it up there and these colors well let's start off with a, a lightish color first so a bit of light red and I've got neutral tint up the top here a bit more water this mustn't be too dry this brush or too wet sort of in the middle because it does hold quite a lot of um, paint and then as you can see we've got a very good um, point to it quite a nice edge as well and um, basically you can't be too precise with this the more precise you are the more careful you are doing these twigs I think the more unrealistic they look a bit more water um, let's have a bit of burnt sienna so it's not too dark And these branches really are all over the place particularly um, in the canopy there up in the canopy higher up they're more they're more um, it's more of those twigs and with this dry brush you 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 tend to get some gaps in the lines which is good a 
burnt sienna neutral tint. Just come on down to the meeting the background hills. Silver birch. I'm trying to think, it's got some little markings, but silver birch trees they have sort of these dark markings over the top of this sort of silver bark. Still don't have enough moisture on this brush for some reason. Let's keep working at it. Sorry for the lack of commentary here, I'm sort of just concentrating on getting this, getting this effect of the randomness of the, the branches and the, the crisscrossing and going all over the place. It could be a few little, just to give the sense of movement, a few little wayward marks beyond the canopy. And then we're coming down. Coming down to the ground. Just see if it's having a bit of water in here, just here and there, where the branches are so dense that it's sort of you can't actually discern where the twigs are. Make sure I'm going over the edge of the paper as well. Right now. The ground here I need to um, get some soft edges where there's different little pop marks of snow so with a, a clear with a brush with clear water I will just put in a few little marks like that and then the all-important shadows where I'm going to mix in a little bit of 
basically cobalt blue again nice blue shadows works well and I think that will contrast quite nicely with the the yellow as well that I did first of all so let's just mix up I've got a medium mop brush here with a good with a good point to it an edge and a few shadows on the left hand side I need to be quite soft in value, a little bit grayer in value for the far shadows though. over those figures as the shadows come towards us they'll be a little bit more intense and then up to meet these trees Again, I'm not the, the lines here not too straight and precise. They need to be quite random, a bit like the painting of the um, of the twigs. Keep mixing. See, we're getting in some, getting in some softer edges. Mixing a bit of colors in crimson. tint in there just to get in some variation of shadow values and colors now back to cobalt blue and the shadows going across Across the road. Cobalt blue is getting a bit of a battering in this one. Let's mix up a bit more. A little bit of aloes and crimson in it. So these shadows are coming from those trees there. Then they hit this middle ridge where they just go up up a little bit 
and then cross Perhaps these shadows get a little bit soft as we go over. That's the right hand side of that central ridge. So across the road. up a little bit and perhaps just a few of them going up the hill there. I'll add in the, make sure I've added in the shadow for this figure as well. picking up some orange here just to create some little bits of golden scrub or shrubs just on the far on the far um, on this little corner here and dab that in yeah uh, so um, what else oh tire marks tire marks dropped in some darker colour just where it's in darker in it's sort of further away from the sun it's sort of uh, not catching much of the sunlight just need to close up that area there right Think we're ready now I just need to make sure this is totally dry before putting in the the dogs and the figures I'm going to get my hair dryer out dogs and the figures I'll, I'll just use this same brush again it's got quite a good point to it could have used the small round brush as well for this in fact I'll do one I'll do one with a small round get all this white gouache off first so quite dark not too much water neutral tint, burnt umber and so this 
left hand dog bit more water in fact I'll go darker ultra in blue neutral tint one in a small round brush takes longer to do let's go in with a bigger brush now with more of a point to it as a variation again quite dark and make sure I've got a good point to it oh, too much water that's why I was looking at the point wasn't too, it's still too much on that. That's better. It's dog number two and then the figure figure because they got some warm clothing on they'll, they'll, appear, they'll appear a little bit sort of bloated that and maybe there's some little footprints from these as well so from the dogs and the figures Like that. Right, nearly there. Um, let's go back and have some twigs. Another, another very effective thing I think for snow is to have some little twigs coming out of the snow so I need to have a very fine brush with this good point and then just just here and there You always find these little, 
little twiggy things around the base of trees as well. Not too many. Right, this figure. That's sort of all right, I think. Um, that dog there, does it need darkening up a bit? Can't really see it's against the light. It's sort of shining a bit too much. What I could do is add on a little bit of highlight so I could get a some white gouache paint with the same brush just pick up on a few highlights not too many so make sure this brush is really clean <laughs> It's still got some neutral tint in it, which is making my white paint grey. I'm going to squeeze this out on a paper towel. That's better. So, into the tube. into the tube and let's just pick out a few little highlights there just catching the light a little bit and little bit of light hitting the that dog there not sure what breed that is there I think that's done um, don't think anything else needs doing a possibly you could put a few birds in the sky um, we could have maybe it's maybe it's some um, late winter early spring and there's some geese or whatever flying flying north so there's going to be a V shape formation of geese going north I assume that's south there we go snow painting for our patreon February project good luck with that instructions um, as usual for getting your getting a photograph of your paintings to me um, bar means do do a different style if you want to you don't need to copy this exactly um, I was thinking about having a skier, maybe having a couple of skiers going down, coming up the road or going down the road. Um, yeah, just let's just get a few more, a few more lines there, just to just to sort of say it's a road, not too many. Um, is a road there we are snow painting um so thanks very much for watching and look forward to those on patreon look forward to getting your pictures